It will be Leipzig after their 2-1 win against Atletico Madrid. Don and Stevie with me, two very happy gentlemen because the game didn't go to extra time. Because let's face it, Don, from a neutral's point of view, this wasn't that pretty. It wasn't that pretty, but the best team won in the end. I mean, I just found it such a bore the way Simeone set up his team. I predicted last night when we were chatting, I thought Atleti would have went through because I thought Morata would have started. And I thought Yao Felix would have started as well. And he went for Lorente and Costa. And what were they going to do against Leipzig's three centre-halves? Absolutely nothing. And he went defensive. It didn't work. And the best team on the night went through. And fair play to Nagelsmann. You know, he, he picked the right system. He played the right players. They played some cracking football and scored some very good goals. Uh, Stevie was saying off camera before we started, not meaning to make this all about Liverpool, but it's like, how on earth did Atleti do this? I oh, no. I can't even figure it out still. They were terrible today, Stevie. I mean, yeah, and, and I'm with Don. The best team won. You know, Campbell and Sabitzer in the middle of the park were just fantastic. I mean, they just ran the game. And the Puma can out the back was just every single thing you look for in a modern footballer. You know, he's strong in a challenge. And with the ball at his feet, he looked fantastic. So if if Leipzig had a forward line, then this game would have been well and done and dusted way before it was. Because up front, I mean, Poulsen was horrendous. And Konku was, was actually playing. Yes, Olmo got his goal, but... And the final third, if if they can start producing some movement or just just some some individual brilliance, then they've got a chance of winning this. But unfortunately, because of the front three that they've got, that's why they can't win this. How do you feel if you're a player and you play for Atleti and you see yourselves set up against a team that you're better than? Atleti are a better team than Leipzig. I don't think that's really debatable on their day. Obviously, Leipzig winning today. So why did Simeone set up like this and why did he leave some of his star players on the bench? I almost think he gets off on it, Dan, because, you know, I think it's a disgrace, really, when you think of the tactics that, that, that he adopts. You know, very, very defensive. They stay in their shape. They're very, very rigid. And I'm trying to get into the head of, of someone like Yao Felix tonight and how must he feel coming off the bench and was absolutely head and shoulder above everyone on the pitch. The kid was different class, and he's now out of the Champions League. You know, I think I sent out a tweet earlier about saying, can you imagine if the the very biggest of clubs come in for Yao Felix, how good they could turn him. They could turn him into an absolute superstar and one of the world's very, very best. And he's got to try and play and come off the bench and play in a rigid defensive system. It must be a nightmare for him. It goes against the grain of the kid. The kid's an expressive player. And, and when he's on form, like it's like Mbappe was last night, I'm not putting him in that bracket, but certainly when he cost that amount of money and the talent that he's got, the kid should be playing in a system and a team and a manager that is on the front foot and trying to score goals and trying to create chances. How do you feel from a player's perspective, Stevie? I would think Felix would be very frustrated, but I think the important thing there is, you know, Don said he's a kid and that's what he is. And so when you're a kid... You keep your mouth closed. You know, if you're an experienced campaigner, then you'll turn around eventually and say, look, <laughs> just that you ask me, what's going on here? Unfortunately, a young player has joined a culture because that's what Atletico Madrid are. It's a culture. You're walking into a side with, the, the, with Sal, Koke, all black and gold, you know, Savage. These guys are absolutely drilled in the, the Simeone way. And anybody who comes through that door falls into the culture so that's what this team is it's just a culture of not making any mistakes sitting back let the other team take the initiative until we have to uh, and that's why well that's why Joe Felix doesn't even start because he doesn't do the job it's a it's, it's not about showing your class and showing us what you've got it's about doing a job and he doesn't do a job for Simeone so he doesn't start part of that culture Diego Costa as well who did nothing, Don, zero in this match. No, he'd done nothing but credit the centre-half, or credit the three centre-half, because they absolutely bullied him. And as Stevie said before, Upper Meccano was just unbelievable. You know, he's he's sensational when the ball's at his feet. He can take players on, he steps into midfield, he plays the right passes, but he's physically absolutely immense as well. So Diego Costa trying to have a fight and trying to bully him was never, ever going to happen. And the kid put him in his place. But that's why... That's why I tried to predict Atletico last night, Dan, because I thought, and I don't know why I thought this, because I should have known better with Simeone, 
I thought he would have started Morata and I thought he would have started Felix because as a pair, you could see there was a relationship between them two. Every time Felix got the ball, he was trying to bounce little one-twos off Morata. And it's, you know, people might say, well, that's easy in hindsight. No, that's Simeone's fault. He should have knew that before the game. He should have knew that the two players that he went for from the start were never going to get any joy out of Leipzig's three. Never, ever. I remember us having arguments in the past, Stevie, about Diego Simeone and where he goes from Atleti afterwards. And I was saying, yeah, but he's a winner. He can come and he can bring silverware to, to wherever he goes. Yet you look at a performance like that tonight from his side and you do wonder whether or not he could take over pretty much any other big club and get away with, it, with what he does at Atleti. Uh, I'm not so sure about that, Dan. You know, all the all the big clubs now that are all playing proper attacking football. That's not what Diego Simeone does. Mm. And and you can understand that if if Atletico Madrid were a team full of, you know, low budget buys, twenty and 25 million and put together and everything's about fighting for your life. You could understand that, but they're not. You know, uh, I don't know whether Don mentioned it, but he was talking about it earlier. They're 200 millions worth on the bench. So yeah. you're going out and spending crazy money on players and then asking them to sit behind the ball. I mean, you won't get away with that at the, at, at the, the big clubs now, your Barcelona's and Real Madrid and, and, and Liverpool now and, and City, all, all the proper teams. You can't do that. So, yeah, I, I would bet against Simeone being able to do anything other than what this team does for him. Uh, I think I was like you, Dan. I think a couple of years ago or, or four or five years ago when Simeone's stock was really high and he was getting linked with jobs in the Premier League and, and a team like Arsenal who needed that sort of manager, I was actually thinking, oh, Simeone could come in, he could make them a little bit defensively better. But I think his stock's gone down tonight. I think all the all the owners and, and, and all the people that watch football enjoy watching football and the game's moved on. I don't think he's I don't think the very biggest of clubs in the world now will be chasing Simeone. They will be chasing though, Upa Meccano, as you mentioned, Stevie. It, it's interesting how our culture's yeah. changed, even since we've been doing this show over the ten years, about how central defenders and their stock has risen. And we've talked about it a lot about how big clubs need to bring in additions to the squad to help them de defensively. Off this performance, yeah. almost alone, there's going to be a lot of eyes on this player. Yeah, this is the best I've seen him. You know, I think before the before the shutdown, a couple of times I saw him in the Bundesliga and he made some mistakes. But then I thought, hold on a second, he's not the finished article. Uh, everybody makes mistakes, and sometimes it's very easy to jump on those mistakes. Uh, but you started off by saying about you know how we we kind of. Sometimes go overboard about centre backs. Well, the reason is because there aren't that many good ones around. Mm. And I'll tell you what, on this performance, Apumacana will not be at Leipzig for very long. Now, Don, obviously, you've seen him more than most. How mm. much is this consistent of what he can produce week in, week out? Yeah, very much so. He's had a terrific season. Um, and that's the type of player he is. He hasn't got many flaws in his game, and he's only 21. I think that's the, that's the crazy thing about him. You know, he's got a little bit of room to develop. There was a little incident that, that happened in the game where you think you could brush up because you got lucky when he just dangled a leg and, and I think it was Lerdl just took a dive and got a yellow card, and rightly so. But he went with his left foot and it was a little bit risky. And that's the type of, and Stevie knows, that's the type of challenge. In your own 18-yard box, you either go with your strong foot, the back foot, which is your right foot, or you hold your hands up and say, look, I'm not going to make a tackle. And he just dangled that leg and he got very, very lucky. So there's little bits of his game that he can improve. But when you're 21 and you're playing the way he does with so much confidence and you're physically stronger than everyone else you're playing against, and then you can handle the ball and you can step into midfield and you can make the right pass, and he's got a turn of pace. I mean, my word, what's this, what's this kid going to be like in three or four years' time? Gentlemen, thank you very much. So you know, go on, Stevie. No, I was just going to say that there are not many 21-year-olds who very quickly understand that they've actually made a mistake. That that challenge Don's talking about, most 21-year-olds, once they make the decision to dangle the leg, just follow through with it. This guy actually had the brains and the, and the wherewithal to very quickly realise that he had made a mistake and he pulled out. That, that, that tells you this kid's got a brain and he's also got, he's got brute strength. Uh, and he's got ability with his feet. I tell you what, this kid could be something else. Gentlemen, as always, uh, thank you very much. So the bracket's set. 
certainly the top half, it will be. PSG taking on Leipzig in the Champions League semi-final. That game is on Tuesday. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.